السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد so today إن شاء الله the hadith of Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن it is reported نعم ده عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه said that the distance between the sky of the dunya سماء الدنيا and the next heaven is 500 years and between every heaven and the next heaven is a distance of 500 years and between the seventh heaven and the kursi is a distance of 500 years and between the kursi and the water is a distance of 500 years and the arsh is fawq al ma and the throne of allah is over the water and allah fawq al arsh allah fawq al arsh wa la yakhfa alayhi shay'un min a'malikum so allah is above the arsh and there is nothing hidden to allah of your deeds what's the sanad Fadlal. No, not you. Not you. Not Walid. He's a Londoner. He wants someone from Birmingham. Naam, Akhi. Fadlal. Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi. Hamad ibn Salama. From Asim bin Bahdala. From? From Zir. Ibn Hubaysh from from Abdullah Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu what's the ruling on the narration it is mawquf with the hukum of marfu' it is mawquf but the hukum is marfu' what does that mean sorry that it is elevated as the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu But Abdullah bin Mas'ud said it. Alright? The narration is from Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Why is it marfu'? Why do we say, though it is a statement of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, that we ascribe it to Rasulullah? Sorry, Ibrahim. Because it is from the matters of the unseen, and talk to me like you're speaking to just a person who wants to know what, why you're saying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said it. So I'm asking you, Abdullah bin Mas'ud said it. Why do you say that it's from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It's from the matters of the unseen, so what? Jazakallah khair. That it is not possible for Abdullah bin Mas'ud to have this knowledge except if he had heard it from Allah's Messenger because the matter is from the matters of the unseen and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum had no knowledge of the unseen because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reveal to them. Who did, they, who did Allah reveal to? Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam. Right? So the hukum is marfu'. Who said the hukum is marfu'? What did Ibn, Ibn Uthaymin? We had a nice statement from Ibn Uthaymin. Anyone recall it? <clears throat> Ibn Uthaymin said, that the narration is mawquf, meaning it is a statement of Ibn Mas'ud. But he takes the hukum, takes the ruling of raf', meaning marfu', to Allah's Messenger Wasallam, because knowledge is not known, this type of knowledge of the unseen is not known through reason or opinion. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud did not take from the Israeliyat. He did not take from the narrations of the people of the book. What's the ruling on the hadith? So the author or the hadith, what is it? And name some scholars. Ibn Qayyim, Al-Dhahabi, Zakallah Khairi, Al-Dhahabi said, Isnaduhu Sahih. His chain of narration is Sahih. What did Al-Albani say? He said, it is Jayyid. 
It is a good chain of narration. In which book of Al Albani? Sorry? No. No. Don't throw me all of Al Albani's books at me now. Jazakallah khair is tahqiq of Al Alu, which is called uh, and his summarization of it. Mukhtasar Al Alu. Also, <coughs> Imam Al Dahabi, who is the original author of Al Alu, the book upon the highness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most high above his creation. So alhamdulillah, this narration affirms for us without a shadow of a doubt. Wallahu fawq al-arsh. Wal-arsh fawq al ma Right? And above and below the water is the kursi. And below that are the heavens. And between each level of the heavens, how many years? Barakallahu feekum. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. so we just continue إن شاء الله. we thank our brother جزا الله خير عبد الإله الحمامي حفظه الله تعالى for that short and powerful reminder. and we will proceed بإذن الله تعالى for the next ten or so minutes till the end of today's lesson. And that is a continuation of Kitab al-Tawheed. In the final chapter, Bab ma jaa fi qawli Allahi ta'ala ma qadaru allaha haqqa qadrihi wal ardu jami'an qabdatuhu yawm al-qiyama. The chapter, what has been narrated regarding the saying of Allah. They made not a just estimate of Allah such as is due to him. And on the day of resurrection, the whole of the earth will be grasped by his hand. And we covered the text of that chapter, so I'm not going to repeat that, but we'll enter into the sharh, or the explanation of that chapter, uh, which was, just for the record, chapter number 66. Final chapter, as far as I can tell, na'am, the final chapter in Kitab al-Tawheed. As for the ayah, then Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Regarding the ayah, and in this ayah, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبْدَتُهُ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ That they did not make a just estimate of Allah such as is due to him. And on the day of resurrection, the whole earth will be grasped by his hand. And the ayah continues, as he mentioned in the, in the text, وَالسَّمَوَاتُ مَتْوِيَاتٌ بِيَمِينِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ أَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ And the whole of the heavens or all of the heavens will be rolled up in his right hand. And glorified be Allah, far above is he from that which they ascribe to him of partners. So this ayah is a refutation of the mushrikeen, of the idol worshippers in their claim that the worship of other than Allah is something that is permissible when they requested reconciliation with, Allah, with Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they wanted to come to a middle ground with him, alayhi salatu wasalam, that they said that we will worship your God, meaning we will worship Allah for a year, but you have to worship our gods for a year. So that was the middle ground that they wanted to come to with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that they said we will worship your God for a year, and you worship our gods for a year. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in refutation of them, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُوا مَا تَعْبُدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَابُدُ وَلَا أَنَا عَابِدٌ بِمَا عَبَدْتُمْ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَابُدْ لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this surah, al kafirun where Allah said, the meaning of which is, Say, O Prophet, to them, O unbelievers, I do not worship what you worship, nor are you worshippers of what I worship, nor will I be a worshipper of what you worship, and nor will you be worshippers of what I worship. For you is your religion, and for me is my religion. So this was the response of the Prophet wasallam to those mushrikeen, when they said to the Messenger of Allah, Let's reconcile. So there's no reconciliation when it comes to the issue of Tawheed. I will not worship that which you worship. And you shall not worship that which I, which, which I worship. But you, to your, you to your religion and me to my religion. 
So in these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say to them, Ya Muhammad, قُلْ أَفَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ تَأْمُرُونِّي أَعْبُدْ تَأْمُرُونِّي أَعْبُدْ أَيُّهَا الْجَاهِلُونَ That do you? Naam. Is it other than Allah? قُلْ أَفَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ تَأْمُرُونِّي أَعْبُدُ أَيُّهَا الْجَاهِلُونَ Naam. Is it other than Allah that you order me to worship? أَيُّهَا الْجَاهِلُونَ Oh, you ignorant ones. لَقَدْ أُوْهِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ بَلْ لِلَّهِ بَلْ لِلَّهَ فَعْبُدْ وَكُنْ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ So Allah continued to say, Rather, and is it, or begin, uh, to, begin, uh, to begin again, is it other than Allah that you order me to worship, or ignorant ones? And it has already, and it has already been revealed to you, and to those who were before you, O Muhammad, that if you were to commit shirk, that if you, O Muhammad, and those who came before you, just as you revealed to those who came before you, if you were to commit shirk, then surely all of your deeds would be in vain. And you will certainly be amongst the losers. بَلِ اللَّهَ فَاعْبُدْ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Rather worship only Allah and be amongst the ones who are grateful. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, If you, O Muhammad, just as you revealed to those who came before you, were you to commit shirk? And all of your deeds will be nullified. And then in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, or thereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبْدَتُهُ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ مَتْوِيَاتٌ بِيَمِينِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ أَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ And they have not made a just estimate of Allah such as is due to him. And on the day of resurrection, the whole of the earth will be grasped by his hand and the heavens will be rolled up in his right hand. So then, Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi, he mentions that after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this affair, we see that this is in fact a refutation upon those who make permissible the worship of other than Allah. And in this, meaning in these ayat, there is a clarification of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that the whole of the earth, qabdatuhu yawm al qiyama, that the whole of the earth will be grasped by his hand on the day of resurrection, meaning it will be grasped in his palm. And all of the heavens will be rolled up in his right hand. And this is proof of Allah's greatness. The Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mighty and majestic, and that his names and his attributes are lofty and high. So do not command me, do not command me to change my worship because my God is the one who described himself with these attributes. So should I direct my worship to the creation, a creation that is weak and unable even to fulfill their own needs? قُلْ أَفَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ تَأْمُرُونِّي أَعْبُدُوا أَيُّهَا الْجَاهِلُونَ is it, as Allah has mentioned, is it other than Allah that you order me to worship? Ayyuh al-jahilun, O ignorant ones. So glorified is Allah, far from all imperfections, great and exalted, the one to whom the creation has not given 
his just estimate as is due to him, that is due to their ignorance of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning him and ignorance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's exaltedness. For this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ They have not made, they have made not a just estimate of Allah as is due to him. وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبْدَتُهُ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ And all of the earth will be in his grasp on the day of resurrection. So from this it is clear that shirk invalidates one's deeds of outward piety. That is because shirk equates the weak and feeble creation with the Lord, the Magnificent. So if it is the case that even if the messengers, indeed the best of the messengers, Muhammad sallallahu that he is threatened with the invalidation of his righteous deeds, if he was to commit shirk with his Lord, and that is of course an impossibility, totally and utterly not possible that the Prophet ﷺ would do so. Nevertheless, if the messengers were threatened with that, then it is an even greater threat upon other than the messengers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala followed that threat immediately with the statement, بَلِلَّهَ فَعْبُدْ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Rather worship only Allah and be amongst the grateful. That is because he alone is worthy of worship. As for other than Allah, then it is a duty upon those creatures for them to be worshippers of their Lord and not objects of worship themselves. Allah's greatness cannot be paralleled. His ability and might cannot be compared to anything. Allah has described himself, the one free of all imperfections, that he will roll up the seven heavens in his right hand and the seven earths in his right hand because both of the hands of Allah are right hands. He will roll up the seven heavens in his right hand and the seven earths in his other hand. So who is more deserving of being worshipped? The one with this power and ability which no one can prevent, prevent him from exacting and carrying out whatever he wills? Or is someone other than him worthy of your worship? The answer, it is none other than Allah. He is the one, sole one, deserving of worship. He is befitting and, mo and most worthy of that. Imam Muslim reports from Ibn Umar, in a narration that is marfu' that we have mentioned that Allah will roll up the heavens on the day of resurrection and take them in his right hand and then he will say Anal Malik, I am the king this hadith and the one before it affirms the two hands of Allah and in the first hadith we have the affirmation of the fingers for Allah in the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبْدَتُهُ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ The whole of the earth will be in his grasp on the day of resurrection. So this is the affirmation of the kaf or the grasp and the grip and the palm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An affirmation of the grasping for Allah and we believe that Allah does whatever He wills. And we believe that in His hand is ownership of everything. And He dispenses of it as He wills. And from this we affirm that Allah will roll up all of the seven heavens. And He will roll up all of the seven earths. And from the first hadith, we see that the Prophet ﷺ, bahika, that he laughed, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when the rabbi came to him in approval of the correctness and the truthfulness of the speech of the rabbi. 
when the rabbi mentioned with regard to the fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you go back to that narration, that where, where the rabbi said, Oh Muhammad, we learn that Allah will put all the heavens on one finger and all the earths on one finger and the trees on one finger and the water on a finger and the soil upon a finger and all of the rest of the beings upon the, upon the finger. And then he will say, Ana al-Malik. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fadahika nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laughed up until hatta badat nawajiduhu tasdiqan li qawli al-habar. Then he laughed and such that you could see his premolars becoming visible. His nawajid becoming visible. Tasdiqan in affirming the truthfulness of the, co- of the speech of the rabbi. So in this, we see an affirmation of the fingers of Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam laughed. And he said, perhaps, Sheikh Ahmed the Najmi said, perhaps it was due to him being astonished that the rabbi should know of such an affair. Yet the rabbi did not believe in the Quran wherein was revealed the truthfulness of what was present in his saying and in the hadith. Wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, يَوْمَ نَتْوِ السَّمَاءَ كَتَيِّ السِّجِّلِّ لِلْكُتُبِ كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَّلَ خَلْقٍ نُعِيدُهُ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, the day when we shall roll up the heavens like a scroll rolled up for the record. As we began the first creation, we shall repeat it as we began. The first creation, we shall repeat it. Sijilli. Such as just like the scroll that is rolled up, like a paper that is rolled up. Allah will roll up the heavens on that day. Shaykh, Shaykh Ahmed al Najmi said, Subhanallah al Azim. Glorified is Allah free from all imperfections, the great, the exalted. The heavens in their vastness, in their weight, their density and their immense height, Allah will roll them up like scrolls of paper in a record. How mighty and great is the power of Allah. For this reason, it is obligatory upon all of the creation to single out Allah alone with worship and not to set up associates along with Him in worship. He is the true God to whom worship is directed in humility and humbleness to His majesty with iman in His greatness and in his power and his ability. Then the author narrates a hadith from Abdullah ibn Abbas, indicating in a manner that indicates his weakness. And inshallah, we'll mention that narration from Abdullah ibn Abbas next week, inshallah. And then next week will be, inshallah, the last lesson of Kitab al-Tawheed. Bidhinillah. Wa jazakumullahu khairan, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.